So for that reason, the only time that it's really practical to place them is in the end game in a 1v1 to block off a path or entryway while you're not being attacked or of course to grief your teammates. Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we'll go over all things Betsy, and by the end, you'll have all the knowledge you need to be able to play Betsy at the highest level. First things first are items. Betsy's unique area of effect weapon kit makes her the spammiest character currently in Zuba. What I mean by this exactly is that all three of her attacks affect an area. Because of this, nitro item modifiers do little to nothing for Betsy. Instead, we want to further enhance Betsy's spam, so for that reason, her two best items are Cluster Bomb and Molotov Bomb. These are staple items for Betsy in all modes. For the other two items, Jungle Shoes, Holy Sandals, Vampire Teeth, Bandage, and Adrenaline Shot are all viable choices. For squad gameplay, since you cannot bring Molotov Bomb, you should absolutely substitute in a Defibrillator. There is not even a close better alternative. Now. Let's move on to playstyle. As mentioned before, Betsy in a nutshell is just a spammer. The best way to play her is to simply spam all of her attacks constantly. If you ever find yourself in a fight not using your attacks the second they're ready, you're not playing Betsy optimally. The biggest trap you can get into playing Betsy is trying to aim her spear. Spending more than maybe half a second focusing her spear is too long and you'll open yourself up to taking tons of damage or being ambushed because you've stopped creating pressure from your bombs and arrow rain. The only exception to this rule is versus slow characters with little to no mobility such as Bruce's, Louis, Donna's, and fellow Betsy's for example. Even still, you should not spend too much time aiming your spear. Betsy's active and passive go hand in hand and are very straightforward. You have four barricades each on very low separate cooldowns, and you can eat the barricades you've placed to recover health after a short period. I found the best way to heal in combat is to place one barricade in front of you to block incoming attacks and one barricade behind you to eat for health. The purpose of placing the healing barricade behind you is so that incoming attacks don't destroy it during the short time it takes to eat it. As far as barricade usage goes in combat, I'd simply rotate placing one barricade for every three attacks. So for example, throw your bomb, use your arrow rain, use your aerial spear, then place a barricade and repeat. Betsy can stack barricades as well, and the double barricade has a few unique defenses that the single barricade does not. First, it can take two extra hits for a total of five before being destroyed. Second, it can fully block thrown bombs. And finally, Skippy cannot jump over it. The only one of those three things that's really significant at all times, however, is the fact that a double barricade can fully block thrown bombs. It takes quite a bit of time to actually stack barricades relative to the pace of battle, so for that reason, the only time that it's really practical to place them is in the end game in a 1v1, to block off a path or entryway while you're not being attacked, or of course, to grief your teammates. That's about it as far as the general guide goes for Betsy. However, there are a couple of random niche things I have to share with you as well. First, you can use Betsy's spear to zone enemies by simply quick firing it. It will almost never hit them, but the point is to zone them where you want them to go, and the large radius may accomplish this and trick most players into thinking the entire zone is unsafe. Second, Betsy's spear can hit multiple targets, but they have to be extremely close to each other when the spear lands. This information is not particularly useful in actuality, as it is likely extremely rare to have an opportunity to intentionally hit two targets unless they're stationary and have slow reaction time, but it's useful to be aware of in squad gameplay because you may consider throwing your spear more inside a group of enemies than attempting to hit a single individual off to the side. One last thing, being inside buildings and structures is probably the safest for Betsy because she can use her bow and spear from inside and shoot outside. So if you're playing against a Betsy and you see them inside a building, be careful. In conclusion, Betsy is not an intrinsically hard character to master, but she is somewhat advanced as far as good weapon rotation and mechanics go. I would consider Betsy on the weaker side overall simply because she does not excel in any given fight and benefits the most from enemies tightly grouped up together. She is therefore the strongest in team-based game modes, and realistically this makes sense because beavers are pack animals after all.
All right, easy jade kill in the water. Got a Lizzie here. Probably one of the easiest characters for Betsy to kill. Any character that doesn't have a lot of mobility, you can just bomb freely. Lizzie's, Shelly's, Bruce's. Buck is pretty decent for Betsy. Other Betsy's. Earl. We are on a killing spree right now. It's like there's still four enemies left. Now this is very, very easy. All I have to do is sit here with barricades, throw bombs, rain down arrows, throw spears, and that's about it. This Molly is a little annoying, but all we have to do is throw the legendary bomb in her direction, and there's not much she can do. She does go down in the fire. So it's just this Lizzie, and I think there's a fuzzy left. And yeah, all we have to do is just place a barricade in front of us to block projectiles and throw the bombs. Easy. GG. Make it easy on yourselves. 
simplest path to victory. All right, last game here, starting towards the center. The legendary guard is with us. I debate taking that guard down, but there is a Nyx contesting, and I'd rather just pick up the legendary guard kill if I can. Pretty much just all or nothing here. I know there's a GM1 Milo, which is a little bit of a concern, and a Nyx who can easily take the legendary, but with the barricades and the game being so early, like I said, I'd rather just all or nothing. I'm surprised the Knicks didn't get the legendary, but we outplay them both with barricades. Pretty nice. When I recorded this video, I still hadn't played against a fellow Betsy yet from another character perspective, so I had no idea how annoying it is when you're trying to shoot somebody as Pepper or Milo, and they're a Betsy, and they just keep putting barricades down and blocking your shots. It is infuriating. And Shelly, I just, I just feel bad for Shelly's. They just have nothing to do against you. There is literally nothing you can do. Barricade, heal, bomb, arrows, spear, barricade, heal. Oh, arrow, spear, dead. On to the next one. Milo's dead to fire. Have the jungle shoes on for this last game. We're able to dance around that Pepper's bombs without taking damage due to jungle shoes. Very nice item on Betsy who has no mobility. Now you can also use Helium Canister. I didn't mention Helium Canister as another item that's viable for Betsy. And the reason is her barricades sometimes make it difficult to use Helium Canister effectively. Bombs and arrows everywhere. Come on down to Fear's Shop of Mayhem and get obliterated. Last Nyx doesn't even want anything to do with this. GG's. That's all for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. Hopefully your Betsy gameplay is just a little stronger now. Join my Discord server for more strategy and to hang out and talk about Zubo with others. Link in the description below. Until next time, happy hunting. After some thorough testing, I've concluded inflatable muscles are terrible on Betsy for two reasons. 
First, she has low health, so the bonus health from muscles is almost irrelevant. And second, Betsy has no consistently deadly direct shots such as a focus bow or focus spear, so the damage increase has little impact on her.